And welcome back to Jambalaya. Right now it is 626. Part of the rise in popularity of the Final Four over the last 30 years has been the fact basketball is America's all-inclusive game. From country kids in Indiana to city kids in Los Angeles, if you have a ball and a hoop, you pretty much can play. Well, for those of us who grew up in the 70s, basketball was important in changing our culture, breaking down barriers of race, for instance. And if there was one television show which became our ideal of life and sport, it was The White Shadow. It hit the air in 1978 and struck a chord with kids who loved sports instantaneously. The White Shadow, a television series which ran on CBS starring Ken Howard as Coach Reeves, a white ex-NBA player with the Chicago Bulls who blows out his knee and then gets hired by his old friend and teammate Jim Willis as head basketball coach at the mostly black and Hispanic Harbor High School in Los Angeles. The White Shadow was created by TV producer and big basketball fan Bruce Paltrow, who later created St. Elsewhere and was the father of actress Gwyneth Paltrow. It was a show which used sport to launch its own commentary on life, race, and just about any other topic in its day. Now The White Shadow is on DVD, giving new life to one of the best TV shows ever made. And recently I had the chance to talk with the show's star, Ken Howard. I'm almost tempted to call you Coach Reeves. Do you get fans of the show that still come up to you and, and call you that? A lot of times people just say, hi, Coach. I can see it coming. It always makes me feel good. It's, it's a nice way to be uh, remembered and recognized. Uh, usually they're guys in, uh, you know, in their late 30s, early 40s, and I can kind of see them coming because it means <laughs> they were teenagers right about that time. And, uh, All right, you guys, I want you to uh, divide yourselves. Man. In Keep the volume down. What's your name? <laughs> uh... Hayward. Mine's Reeves. Mm. You remember mine, because I'm going to remember yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remember mine, because I'm, I'm going to remember, remember yours. yours. <laughs> yeah, I even remember my junior high basketball team. We all took one of the characters, like so-and-so was Coolidge, so-and-so right. was Hayward. And uh, the show just, I think, is going to always live on through the fans because it had such an impact on them. Yeah, it did. And I, it, was, it was unique, wasn't it? It was... Uh, when I look back on it, it's, uh, it's interesting that we were able to pull it off. What's this? Cool. It's a gift from a fan. Oh. She's still going to be a fan of yours when I move you to a different position? What position? Bench. At first, they kind of laughed at us when, when we told them what we were going to try to do. And then they let us do the pilot, and they liked it. And they really didn't give us too much of a chance. And we, we really did very well, even in terms of ratings. Now, of course, if you can imagine. Uh, the number of people we were getting back then, it was about 30 million uh, an episode. That's huge now because it's all spread out. The audience back then, it was just three networks. I, I can distinctly remember a White Shadow moment in my life going to a basketball camp one year, and I was with a bunch of my friends. We were from a, a white suburb of Milwaukee. We met a bunch of inner city kids from Chicago, and we, I remember sitting for an hour or so just talking about race and relations. and. To me, basketball and sports in general have really done a lot to help bridge the gap of race relations. I think it p particularly basketball, too, because basketball in America is like soccer in Europe. And by that, I mean a, a kid just has to show up at the field. It really is a, a great sport for poor kids. You don't need anything. The one thing I think a lot of people remember about the White Shadow is it was so cutting edge as well because you guys dealt with a lot of issues, drugs, pregnancy, racism, all these things that, that maybe other uh, network programs really couldn't deal with at that time. Right, or, or wouldn't. Uh, we had to fight for it a lot to get into those areas. And uh, racism was certainly part of it. A lot of it, I think, had to do with all the pressures, and that hasn't gone away, that are on kids in, in any environment, any high, at the high school level, certainly in the inner city envi uh, environment. What's wrong with you? Don't be grabbing me, man. You Next time you go right through that locker. I remember talking a lot with Thomas Carter in particular, but just trying to be right on that edge of, of not being patronizing about it and just getting it right. And we, Paltrow and I would go to Thomas a lot and say, you know, are we just being a couple of white guys who don't really get this? Are we, get, are we, are we hitting this right? And usually he'd say yes or, you know, you're close or try it a little bit this way. So it was, it was a real uh, education for us too as we were doing it. I'm really proud of you guys. And you've got every right to be proud of yourselves. Oh. 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 Oh.
Ken, it was a great show. I'm so thankful it's on DVD, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Al.